students, welcome to Accounting 1313. This is computerized accounting applications for the spring 2023 semester. Um, this is going to be course orientation part one. I am Dr. Mercado and I welcome you to my class. I am super excited. We are going to have three short orientation videos. Part one is going to deal with just general information about myself. Part two is going to deal about Blackboard and then part three is going to deal with SimNet, which is the software that we're going to be utilizing in the class to complete your assignments. Okay, so let's get started. How is this course going to work, Dr. Mercado? Well, this is an asynchronous course. Okay, what does that mean? That means that I'm not going to require that you log in at a specific time or day to listen to me talk. No, that's not how it's going to work. I've basically built everything. I provided you with all of the resources so you can do your assignments as you need to. Okay. Students do not attend class at a set time, but rather access pre-recorded lectures and digital curriculum materials at the time that they choose. So I understand a lot of you work that you have kids, you have to go pick them up from school, put them to school, you have to attend school, you work, you know, life is very busy for all of us and it's very difficult to coincide with the date and time that works for everybody. So I, I do not uh, expect students to log in at a specific time, but I do expect students to log in into Blackboard daily to review anything that I post um, to make sure that you do work on your assignments during the week. Um, so uh, that is how it's going to work. I give you a one week window. It usually runs from Monday and ends on Sunday. And then during those seven days, you complete my designated tasks. OK, so, um, you know, based on my past experiences with asynchronous courses, there's two types of students. they are students that are really committed to doing their work. Um, they are responsible. Um, you know, they stay organized and they do wonderful in my courses. OK, if they come across any question, they let me know. We, you know, I get the question resolved, you know, and they move on. OK, communication with me is not going to be an issue. Anytime you have a question, I am here. I'm available to answer your question. OK, um, it's just that I like I stated earlier, um, it's difficult to to have all of you come across. Now, this is a computer class. We're learning Excel. This is a very hands on class. So people are at different levels. Some people might be exposed to Excel. Some people are just beginners. Some people learn faster than others. So it just depends the type of, of student that you are. So providing an asynchronous course allows for every student to work at their own pace on their own time. However, they feel like it as long as they meet my deadlines. OK. So some pros of asynchronous courses are they provide, of course, flexibility. Students can engage in their courses when, where and how they want. OK, students with demanding circumstances in their personal lives, such as kiddos, aging parents or ill spouses, allow students to create a schedule that works around all of their lifestyle needs uh, without interfering with the coursework. OK, some cons about asynchronous courses are what I found is some of the students find these courses difficult to engage in um, and they feel kind of distant um, either with the uh, instructor or with their classmates, which I don't understand why that is the case. We have a lot of technology. We have Pronto. We have Blackboard. We have all of these technologies um, that you can use to engage in. I've had students create WhatsApp groups. You know, they have study groups. You know, they get together uh, virtually using Teams to collaborate. Um, you know what? It's up to you how you use these technologies. But students sometimes find uh, like not a sense of belonging in a class because we don't meet face to face. Um, the flexibility of asynchronous courses can act as a burden uh, because it requires that students have a higher level of personal accountability for the tasks that need to happen. OK, so students need to be accountable. We are adults already. So that is something that we need to learn to deal with. OK, and if a course requires group work or group projects, uh, scheduling and collaborating with other students may become an issue. In this particular class, we will not be having any group assignments. They're all individual assignments. But if that's the case, you know, like I stated earlier, there's just a lot of technologies that um, we can employ to establish communication with one another. OK, so like I stated, there's three videos. The first one is the one that you're listening to. I'm just going to provide you with a general overview about myself. The second part, I'm going to go over Blackboard, the layout of Blackboard, some general information, 
um, like the start here module, the course content, the messages, the announcements, the grade book, so on and so forth. And then last but not least, we will be using Simnet from McGraw-Hill in this class. All of your assignments will be completed in Simnet, okay? Simnet is a very interactive tool that will provide all of the needed resources for you to complete your assignments and learn specific Excel accounting related tasks. So we're going to go over what is Simnet, how to create your account in Simnet, the different assignments, the gradebook, a variety of information. Okay, I'm going to touch on some of these items as I do not want to overwhelm you with information, but I do want to give you an overview of what to expect in the class. Okay. So who am I? I am Dr. Mercado. I have been a full-time instructor here at STC since fall of 2014. So I've been here for a while already um, and I really, I love it. Um, I come from a banking background. I have over 13 years of banking experience um, and it's completely different. Um, you know, the stress levels at the bank were just end of month, ridiculous. You know, I was, um, I enjoyed it, but it was just, you know, being stuck in an office doing accounting day in and day out versus here as an instructor at STC I get to still learn about accounting you know keep up with accounting but also I get to meet all of you okay and that's something that I really really love I get to uh, you know meet new students uh, see the students progress through my different courses um, see them graduate you know see them come back um, it's, it's amazing it's a wonderful experience I never thought I would be an instructor but here I am and I'm loving it, okay? So my educational experience, just like you all, I started at STC. Back in the day, it used to be South Texas Community College. I started off with a certificate. Yes, I did. I got my accounting clerk certificate in May of 2001. I continued uh, with my education and I got my Associates of Arts in Business Administration in August of 2004. At that point, STC or South Texas Community College was not offering any um, any bachelor's program, so I had to transfer out, and I transferred to the University of Texas Pan American, and I earned my bachelor's in accounting in December of 2006. Um, I then continued with my education, and in December of 2013, I obtained my master's of accountancy from the University of Texas Pan American. And then when I began working here at STC, I decided to go back to school. Um, and in November of 2020, I earned my Doctor's of Philosophy in Business Administration with specialization in organizational leadership. Okay. So during all of this time that I was going to school, guess what? I was working full time, just like most of you. Okay. So I know how it feels. Okay. I was working. Um, I had two kids. Um, I have two biological daughters. Right now they're ages uh, 15 and 18, but they were little when I was working. They were, you know, newborns and then they grew up eventually. So I had two girls and then I adopted two boys. Okay. When I adopted my boys, they were ages six and seven. Currently they're ages 20 and 21. Okay. So um, I've got four kiddos. Um, and like I said, I used to work, um, I started working in, at HEB, then I got my accounting clerk certificate and I started working in a maquiladora. I love working at a maquiladora. And then um, I got la uh, laid off from the maquiladora and then um, I ended up working at uh, Texas State Bank. Um, and then I moved from Texas State Bank, it transitioned to BBVA and then I ended up working at Lone Star National Bank. Okay, so um, I held a variety of positions in all of these places, all from the bottom, I worked myself up. Okay, so I, when I started in banking, I started as a teller, and then I worked myself up to being a vice president, an operations project manager. For many years, I oversaw the accounting department. Um, you know, I was uh, an accounting manager. I oversaw account reconciliations, accounts payables, uh, fixed assets, um, pr the preparation of financial statements, budgeting. Um, we led, uh, you know, the uh, examiners, the internal auditors, you know, um, I was involved in, in a lot of different um, areas or arenas in the uh, banking sector. I love my job. Um, I, I, you know, it was very demanding. Uh, but it was just, you know, very rewarding to see those, you know, end projects that we worked on, the new initiatives, you know, cost saving in this initiatives, the different reports that we created. It was amazing. Okay. So when you find something that you love, you know, it's just like you're getting paid to, to do what you love. Okay. 
So this is a little bit of background about myself. Okay, a lot of you have had me for several classes. Um, so like all of you know, um, COVID hit, and during COVID, you know, I, I suffered tremendous losses. Um, I lost my father. Um, I didn't lose him uh, to COVID. I lost him to um, he was diabetic, so um, he had liver cirrhosis. So we he was bound to pass. So we were awaiting his passing. Um, this happened in July um, of 2020, and then um, the day after I buried my father, my mother-in-law had a heart attack and she passed away as well. And uh, so that was unexpected. Okay. And my mother-in-law's funeral, um, you know, it was COVID hardcore. Um, we picked up COVID um, at her funeral. Uh, my whole family picked up COVID. Um, all of my husband's brothers, sisters, you know, it was a lot of people that had got sick um, during that funeral attendance. So we ended up with COVID and my husband ended up passing away uh, from COVID. So um, in a matter of exactly one month, I lost my father, my mother-in-law, and my husband, okay? So I understand, you know, people go through rough stages in their lives, okay? And I've had all kinds of students share with me, you know, Miss, I have a sick mom, Miss, my, my son is in the hospital, and I understand, okay? You cannot control those things, okay? So if anything is happening in your life that is limiting you or not allowing you to complete your assignments, all you have to do is let me know and we will work together to find a plan to you know, help you out as much as we can, okay? I am a very understanding uh, instructor. All I need is communication, okay? You dropping off from the radar and not letting me know what's going on, I'm going to assume you do not want to participate. You shoot me an email, miss, this is what's happening. I need two weeks, whatever it takes, okay? I can work with you. I can wait with you and we will work around those assignments, okay? But communication is very, very important. Do not be afraid to communicate with me. I am here to help you. Okay, that is what I'm here for. So, weekly tasks. Okay, it is very important that you review your syllabus. I highly encourage that you print out your syllabus. That way you make a folder for my class and that way you keep track of all of the assignments that need to be completed every week. Staying organized is very, very important. Okay, you need to be able to stay organized, meet your deadlines. Okay, make sure that you read those chapters. Okay. You're not going to learn how to do things without reading. Reading is important. There's PowerPoints included in Blackboard, and we'll go over that in lecture number two. Um, but there's uh, PowerPoints that you can utilize to take notes. Uh, begin working on your assignments early in the week. Yes, you have Monday through Sunday. But what has my past experiences told me? Students like to wait for Sunday, and they're not going to get all of their work done. So pace your assignments. Okay, I'm going to work on these assignments on Monday, Tuesday, these assignments Wednesday, Thursday, however is your work schedule, okay, or your life schedule. But make time to work on these assignments during the week, okay? Uh, do not fall behind. If you encounter an emergency, please let me know. Now, I am available uh, to you. I have office hours. Um, so um, if you have questions about the course, about anything, let me know. Okay, the preferred method of communicating with me is through Blackboard messages. But if you're going to use any other mess, any form of uh, method of communicating with me, you can use Blackboard messages, Pronto messages, email messages. I provide you with my cell phone. Okay, if um, if you have uh, an emergency, you can call me or text me. Now, if I don't pick up, it's probably because I'm in class or I'm busy. But you can text me, and I will try to answer as soon as I can. But if you do any of those. Uh, make sure that you give me your name, okay, and the class that you're in, because I teach. I'm going to be teaching in the spring eight classes, with about 30 students per class. So I'm going to have over 200 students. So it's going to be very difficult for me to uh, identify who you are if you don't give me a name. So if you're going to send me a text message to my cell phone, make sure that you state who you are. Hi, Miss. This is Juan Perez from your accounting 1313 class. Awesome. Now I know who you are and what class you're from. And then you let me know whatever it is that you want and let me know. Okay. Please don't call me in the middle of the night because I do go to sleep. Um, so if you have something that's not an emergency, use Blackboard, use an email. I will get with you the following day. 
If it's an emergency, like for example, you're taking a test and you can't get a hold of me, send me a text message and I will let you know, you know what, I'm in class and I'll get back with you as soon as I get out or whatever the case might be, okay? But for my spring 20, 2023 semester, my office hours are going to be Monday and Wednesdays from 9 to 10 a.m. And then on Tuesdays, I'll be there from 9 to 12, okay? So during uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesdays, I will be in my office available to assist you in anything that I can. If it's not those days, um, you are free to send me a Blackboard message or an email, and I will get back with you as soon as possible. Now, I only answer emails Monday through Friday, okay? So if you send me a message on Saturday or Sunday, those are going to wait till Monday. Okay, so please, that's why I urge students to work on their assignments during the week. That way, if you have questions, I can get those answered to you. Okay, I like to do fun stuff with my kiddos on the weekend. So, um, you know, my work is Monday through Friday. And um, like I said, you can send me a message on the weekend, but just note that it will not be answered till Monday. Okay, and I'm pretty good about checking my email by Blackboard My Pronto. Um, I tend to respond fairly quickly. Um, if you identify that you send me a message and I haven't responded, please follow up with me because sometimes I do get bombarded and I might oversee a specific email or a message, okay? Um, and like I stated, just stay organized. Do not fall behind. Uh, work on your assignments. Uh, pace yourself and establish communication, you know, either with myself or with your classmates. I am all for you all uh, creating study groups, you know, getting to know your classmates. Whatever the case might be, you know, you can create a WhatsApp group, you can, um, in Pronto, you have the option of, you know, messaging the entire class. So let's say on a Saturday, you're working on an assignment and you have a question. You know I'm not going to answer you because it's the weekend. But you can post a message on Pronto and ask your classmates, hey, I'm working on this, you know, I don't quite understand this, can somebody explain it? And any other student can kick in and they can help you out, okay? So, uh, you know, feel free to use all of the resources that we have to communicate with each other, okay? I am looking forward to an awesome spring 2023 semester, especially with this class, because like I stated, this is the first semester that I'm teaching it. So um, I am eager to see how this class flows, um, how good, you know, just like you're going to use uh, SimNet, this is my first semester using SimNet. Uh, so I'm not very familiar with it, so be patient with me. Uh, but I am looking forward to, uh, you know, sharing this experience with you. And hopefully, you know, we all learn a lot of new cool stuff using Excel and employing those Excel skills to actual application-based scenarios where you can actually analyze data, create charts, VLOOKUPs, pivot tables, you know, all of the amazing things that we can do using Excel that are going to be wonderful when you all go out there to the workplace and you can say, you know what, I am awesome using Excel. I can do all of this good stuff um, in Excel. Um, it's going to really, really benefit you. Okay. So that is basically it for the first orientation video. Please make sure that you listen to part two, dealing with Blackboard and part three, dealing with SimNet. Okay. Please listen to the videos. That way you have some important information that is being covered. Okay. So that's it for this video. Until next time. Bye-bye.